What's up everyone? China Cycling here with a video I've been wanting to make for a long, long time. So I've had this idea for a while now that I just want to try to build as lightweight bike as possible on a budget using as many Chinese homegrown parts as possible. Weight goal, less than five kilos. Budget goal, less than $2,000. Spoiler alert, this build hits both of those goals with a bunch of the budget left over. In this three part series, I'm gonna talk you through the build. I'd like to go into detail, so one video would be way, way, way too long. So this is part one. I'm gonna talk you through the components of the build, their individual weights and prices, and the various advantages and disadvantages. Part two is just gonna be a chill video of me actually building the bike, throwing it all together. And then in part three, I'm gonna take it out on the roads, hit some climbs, see what it can do, and kind of give you like uh, a review of the build overall. The keystone of any build is the frame set. For this build, I went for the Elves Vanyar. I did a full video looking at that frame set, so you can check that out for more in-depth look at the frame set. But essentially, a full monocoque, one-piece carbon frame set designed and made in mainland China. Retailing for around 900 US dollars and weighing 700 and something grams. It's stiff, it's responsive, I'm really digging it on the few rides I've done so far. The, the exact weight, well, Elves claimed around 740 grams for the frame set. Mine was a size S and came in at 770 grams. Uh, including the seat post clamp, derailleur hangers, water cage bolts, and all that shenanigans. As I said before, the, the weight of the frame set, it depends on what you class as the frame set. Do you take out the seat clamp, things like this, but uh, with the seat clamp in and with all the uh, derailleur hangers and all this small stuff, the frame set came in at 770 grams. Moving on to the front fork, uh, again, came with included with the frame set, obviously. Um, the steerer tube was massive on it. When I first got it, it was 355 grams. Cut the steerer tube down and it lost 50 grams. So it's now 305 grams for the front fork. Again, carbon dropouts on the front. Uh, tire clearance. Mm, uh, def the 23s are no problem. 25s looks like they might be nervous. 28s, I don't think it's happening. Wheels are my Yolio 20 millimeter tubular wheels that I brought two years ago. Uh, so I brought them for 2,400 Kwai, which is uh, 360 US dollars, probably about 260 British pounds. Uh, like I said, they're good wheels, pretty light. The wheel set weighed uh, 1,020 grams with no QR skewers, no nothing on it. Uh, yeah, been I've used them for about two years occasionally on my other bikes. Uh, light enough, stiff enough, absolutely no problems. Again, there are lighter wheels out there, uh, but for the price, you know, 2,400 quid, 360 US dollars, uh, essentially a, a exactly 1,000 gram wheel set. I don't know, good bang for the buck. The headset, so obviously the frame set also came with a, a suitable headset and it was it was okay. The uh, steerer tube, the steerer tube plunger, bung, expander, whatever it's called, was a, was on the bit on the tall side, a bit heavy. So I swapped it out to it for a lightweight one. So the whole upgrade together, we're looking at the original was 57.9, so 58 grams. And then so 58 grams for the original, and then with the new bits, we come in at 18 grams. So yeah, a 40 gram saving in the headset. Obviously, main disadvantage is the support offered by this. Use at your own risk, but weight wiener is going to be weight wieners. The expander plug was 88 yuan, and the uh, stem cap and the, and the bolt together were 45 yuan. So in total, what would, uh, 90, 130-ish yuan, 130 yuan, which is about 13, 14 British pounds, or maybe about 18 or 19 US dollars. 
18 or 19 US dollars to save 40 grams is not bad. But again, be warned, this guy may not be providing a bunch of support for your steerer tube. So not recommended for a bike if you're gonna be sprinting on it. The QR skewers, so when I started building this bike, I lost my lightweight skewers. When I brought these wheels two years ago, I was cheeky and asked for a, a free set of lightweight skewers. And to my surprise, they just said yes. And they gave me a set of 46 gram, like generic unbranded skewers, which was really cool. But then when I started putting this bike together last week, uh, I noticed my skewers were missing. So I, I bought another set of lightweight skewers. Uh, some four wheels, like two grams lighter, 44, 44 grams. Uh, but of course, as soon as I ordered them, I then found my original skewers. So yeah. QR skewers for cost will say zero because I got them for free with my wheels. And for weight, we'll say 46 grams. We'll use the, we'll use the weight of the original skewers. Tires. Uh, on this build, I'm currently running Vittoria Rally in 23 millimeter size. Uh, very cheap and cheerful, very entry level tubular. Mm, uh, yeah, these things weigh 300 grams each. So yeah, 600 grams of tire on this build. Uh, in the future, I'm probably gonna update this bike and you know try to chop off a few more 100 grams. The tires will definitely be the first place to start. I mean, these tires were super cheap. Like for the two, uh, 250 yuan, like 38 US dollars. So yeah, cheap and cheerful. Uh, but for around the same price or a little bit more, you could get some Tuffo tubeless which don't have inner tubes and probably save and probably save yourself 80 grams per wheel so save 106 grams which is huge on a on a build like this but yeah on my build i'm running victoria rallies just cheap and cheerful uh, but maybe if you're doing a build do some more research you can check out the tufo 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 tubeless the seat post is the unit that came with the bike itself so just the Elm's own seat post. Uh, similar sort of design to many seat posts that are trying to be lightweight. But here we're, we're all aluminium. Maybe some light like uh, McFuck uh, seat posts will have this bit as being a carbon fiber insert, which will save a lot of weight. Uh, but this guy comes in at 155 grams. He's pretty long. I've left him uncut at the minute. Might cut him down to save some grams in the future. But yeah, he's 155 grams for weight. And for cost, obviously zero because it came with the bike. The saddle. Uh, I now own so many of these generic Chinese carbon saddles in all sorts of shapes and sizes. They're so cheap. This one cost me 90 kwai, including shipping, like uh, $13 maybe. Uh, so it's a bit heavier than this guy. Uh, I thought it'd be lighter with a nice big cutout, but uh, this this goes with the look of the bike better, and also this cutout leaves some really some pressure. So you can see for cost we'll say uh, thirteen and a half dollars, and for weight we'll say one hundred and one hundred and fourteen grams. For brakes, time for some controversy. Uh, I'm only running a single front brake, uh, and it's this KCNC unit. I've made a video on these brakes before. Uh, long story short, they're light, pretty light. They're cheap, and uh, they're not they're not the strongest brakes in the world. But as I said, I'm going for a climbing bike. Uh, I'm not going to be doing anything dangerous downhill, and so you know these will these will stop me. Cost wise, the the pair of brakes when I brought them a few years back were 600 yuan. Uh, so one, we can say that one brake costs 300 yuan, which is uh, 45 US dollars. And for weight, you can see with pads, with everything, uh, we're at 109 grams, 110 grams. If I end up racing on this bike, uh, I'm going to buy a standalone left brake lever, kind of like what SRAM are selling for their Apex One and their Force One by... Uh, group sets where it's just a left brake lever with no shifting uh, and I'll put the rear brake on the frame I'll put the left hand shifter on and it will add um, maybe 200 300 grams including cables 
So if ever I'm doing a race, I'll put I'll put a rear brake on it to qualify for the race, but it will add around 300 grams. So yeah, uh, by not running the brake, you can say yeah, even with lightweight brakes, saving 300 grams. And again, there are lighter brakes. You know, you've got your EE brakes, uh, where I could save even more weight, but that would push the cost up of this build. Uh, conversely, there are also some Chinese carbon brakes, but they're they're lighter than this, around uh, 60 grams for a brake. But they're single pivot, and the braking performance is even even worse than this. And I'm a light guy; I don't need the best brakes in the world. But when you've only got one brake on it, I think uh, you don't wanna, you don't want to risk it too far. And uh, yeah, everyone's going to draw the line in a different place. But for me, bang for your buck, safety for the weight. I choose a single KCNC. The bars, more controversy. Uh, I love narrow bars, so these are 380 mil wide bars. Um, generic Chinese, again. They cost 165 kwai, which is like uh, $25, including shipping. Uh, and when they got here, they were pretty light too. They were 180 grams. And you, know, you, you tug on them a bit, you hit them a bit, you. Yeah, you listen to the, the things they have to say and you make a little prayer and hope that they're strong. But they feel strong, you know, bending them, pushing them, pulling them, they felt they felt tough. And 180 grams felt good, but uh yeah, I thought I'd do the, the cliche thing of taking the taking the hacksaw to them and chopped off their drops and managed to save thirty eight grams, forty grams. So yeah. For for weight we can now say these bars are, they weigh 141 grams. So 141 grams for the bars with a, with a cost of 164 yuan or $25. The stem, I went for an Uno 7. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Uno 7 stems. I use them on pretty much all my builds. Uh, they're super cheap. This is including shipping 94 yuan, which is about 14 US dollars or maybe about 10 British pounds. And uh, this is a, a 90 millimeter, I think I went for in the end. Um, so usually I go for minus 17 degrees, but because the head tube on this bike's tiny, uh, I went for a regular seven and I run it upside down so it's a minus seven degree stem. And yeah, it's 90 degree, no, 90 degrees. Seven, it's a minus seven degree stem. And yeah, it's in 90 millimeters. I haven't changed any of the bolts yet. All the bolts are the original bolts. I'll change them to titanium to get some more weight off it. Uh, but at the moment, 102 grams. So we can say for weight, 102 grams. And for cost, 94 yuan or 14 US dollars. The crank set. So also pretty interesting. Um, the frame, the Elves Vanyal frame is BB86 which means you can't use an, a SRAM or a, any other shorter BB30 crank set. BB a SRAM, any given SRAM BB30 crank set is probably around 100 grams lighter than the, than the GXP version. So I'm stuck using GXP, which gave me about an extra 100 grams, which is crazy, you know. That 100 grams, to save 100 grams on the frame, you know, I paid an extra 3,000 yuan. And uh, if I just paid, I could have paid 3,000 yuan less, got a slightly heavier frame, but with a BB30 bottom bracket, and I could have used a BB30 crank, and would have saved money and ended up with the same weight. But, uh, you, I like the frame. I like it. We'll see how I get on with it. So anyway, long story short, I'm stuck with GXP. And uh, in GXP, your lightest is, is probably uh, SRAM Reds. Or, you know, if you go crazy money, there are things like THM. Uh, but, you know, we, we want to keep this build a budget, a budget friendly build. And the one thing I love about the SRAM Force cranks is you can take the spider off the crank. And then in China, I've done a video about them before, a company called uh, Stone, Stone Workshop. They make these custom chain rings. And so they can make them in any size and they're narrow wide and they mount directly onto the cranks. So you've got no spider. So you lose the spider uh, and put this straight on there. It's got a six, a six mil offset to keep a decent chain line. Uh, it, could probably have, it could probably do with a bit more offset, 
I'm not sure what offset SRAM are using on their Force one by cranks. But yeah, so this was a this was a Force 22 crank. It was a you know a standard 5034, but I took the spider off it and put this narrow wide on it. This particular one is a 34 tooth, but obviously depending on what I'm riding, I can get bigger or smaller. The advantage of this system again is with a standard BCD 110 spider, the the smallest you can go is 34. But if I'm doing some crazy 10% climb on this, in theory I could put a 20 tooth uh, chain ring on here. And you know, you can ride up a wall with something like that. Why did I choose to go one by? So I think in, in lots of builds, if you switch to one by, you don't actually save that much weight. So you can lose a ring uh, and that'll save you some weight and you can lose the front derailleur and that will save you a little bit of weight as well. But usually it means at the back, you're gonna have to get a heavier rear derailleur with a, maybe even with a clutch built in it. And you're gonna have to uh, probably have a bigger cassette on the back too. And most of the weight you end up trying to save ends up coming back anyway. But because I'm also not running a, a rear brake, I can actually totally get rid of the left shifter. And so on this particular build, maybe it makes more sense to not have uh, a left-hand shifter because I'm running a one by. So yeah, again, in order to get it light as possible, we're doing one by. You know, this this bike is not supposed to be a, a, a daily ridden bike. It's, go, it's for going after segments. And so my idea is, you know, I've got lots of different cassettes, uh, everything from, you know, 11 to 25s to 11 to 36s, 11 40s. You know, you could put a rear derailleur hanger extender on there. And, you know, I can change the size of my uh, chain ring pretty easily too. And so, yeah, usually keeping a one by drive crane, you know, your compromises, you're either going to be spun out or you're going to be grinding up hills. But this bike, I'm going to know what I'm getting into before I get into it. Choose the right gears, choose the right sprockets and go for it. The crank set, I ended up buying a second-hand crank set because I love 165 millimeter cranks and you can't actually buy them new in China. If you want them, there's a three-month waiting list. With them being so rare, you also over, overpay, pay over premium. Even second-hand, I paid 999. The cranks were 1,000 yuan. The narrow wide chain ring was 150 yuan, so in total, for cost 1,150 yuan, which is uh, $172. And weight wise, 493 grams. So like I say, not amazing, thanks to it being GXP. It, it would be, a, it would be a, a, not, a lot nicer to have BB30, but you've got to work with what you got. The bottom bracket, as I said, the frame is BB86. I got the L's own bottom bracket. It's actually a ceramic bottom bracket. Uh, I don't think ceramic bottom brackets are worth uh, what people say they're worth, but this one was pretty cheap. 200 yuan, which is about 30 US dollars. I think usually a disadvantage of uh, ceramic bearings is uh, they're great when they're new, but they're not very weatherproof. But as this bike is just gonna be my occasionally ridden bike, ceramic bearings every little helps weight wise the bottom bracket came in at 90 grams and as i said the price was 200 yuan or around 30 us dollars cassette is from a taiwanese company called recon uh it was 600 yuan which is 900 us dollars it, it's obviously fully aluminium so it's light 150 grams or so but the uh, disadvantage obviously is that aluminum cassettes don't last very long but again with this being my only used occasionally bike not an issue shifting again shifting at the front being taken care of by SRAM Force uh, you don't need SRAM Red to get a lightweight build SRAM Force is close enough especially for the money saved uh, so to save weight as I said before, I'm only using one shifter, the right-hand shifter, but it's hard to buy just a single right-hand shifter new, but sometimes people break their left shifter and then want to sell off their right shifter. So again, I found this guy second-hand online. Uh, the guy even threw in a brand new 
chef cable for me. I ended up paying uh, 450 yuan, which is $67. And you can see this shifter comes in at around 170 grams. So yeah, you can assume that by not having a left shifter, I saved another 170 grams. Shifting at the rear uh, for the moment is being taken care of by SRAM Force. Just a regular SRAM Force 22 rear derailleur. A short cage as well. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Wi-Fi Lie. My LA Sprint even has uh, the Wi-Fi Lie ETAP. I used to run SRAM Apex with Wi-Fi Lie. Like, I'm all about the medium cage derailleur. But I thought, I'll give, a, I'll give the short cage a try. Because I only, I'm running single at the front, I don't need that much capacity for the rear derailleur. And at the back, I don't want the flywheel to be too big because obviously that's getting heavy too. So I'm thinking of running this guy with an 11 to 30 cassette. Uh, he's rated to 11 to 28, but an extra two teeth is not going to kill him. It'll work. Cost, uh, I paid 243 quai for this, or 36 US dollars. And if that seems super cheap, it's because it, because it is. But uh, it's got the serial number scratched off. And so on SRAM's website, they say, be careful of products with scratched off serial numbers. They don't explicitly say that they're fake, but uh, not sure where they come from. But yeah, uh, it seems fine. It, it weighs what it should weigh. We're at 173 grams here. Uh, the outer cage is carbon fiber as it should be. The inner cage is uh, metal as it should be. Don't know if it's aluminum or steel, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, that's our, that's our rear derailing of the SRAM Force. So cheap and light. The chain, I went for a KMC X11EL. Uh, again, there's so much choice with chains and the more you pay, the lighter they get. But I feel like chains, when you get to the top end of chains, they get very, very expensive and not that much lighter. So the, uh, the X11EL, I think, is the third top tier in KMC's range, so not super top, but uh, it means you get to save quite a bit of money. This was uh, 270 yuan, uh, no, sorry, 243 yuan, which is again, $36. So $36 for the chain, and uh, again, because I'm running a, a very small front chain ring, uh, when it came, I was able to shorten the chain by quite a lot, which saved some more weight. And so we're down to 229 grams now. So 230 grams for the chain. Bottle cages. Ended up going for these generic Chinese lightweight, lightweight knockoffs. 18.7 uh, grams each. And they cost 50 yuan each, including shipping. So for the pair, we're talking 100 yuan, which is $15 and uh, 36 grams. So that's a quick overview of all the parts we're going to use in this build. Uh, join us in part two. We're going to put the bike together and do a quick build and see how it comes out. Part two should be coming in the next few days. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. See you soon. China Cycling out.